chaps and chapesses out there. Had a good night's sleep here in my campground in Villa Sumuse, and I'm going to give you a quick pan round so you can see where I'm standing and I'll explain a few things. So you can see my tent and my bike over there I think. I haven't been on the trampoline, I think I might collapse it. And as you can see there's like a little kitchen area. So I'm following the River Muse upwards, so I'll probably leave it today at some point, but I just thought I'd talk a little bit about the campground. So in Germany I found the campgrounds to be very clinical and professional. It was like everything was like nailed down, it could be easily cleaned, but it hadn't really got a personality. When I was I like these sort of campgrounds, I don't know if you can just see behind me, there's like a little mini kitchen area which has got you can tell it's got like a history and a personality to it. And what it is is very useful for somebody that's camping like me. You've got some tables and chairs where you can sit down. There's some plugs over here where you can plug your stuff in. There's a kettle so I can have a cup of coffee. There's my laptop charger. And as you can see, it's got uh, it's probably got like a, a history and a story behind it. So let's go and check out these photos. So at some point, these were probably the golden days, I guess. Which is a little bit faded now. And it's that faded aspect I thought I would talk about because as I've been cycling through France I'm going through these small villages and obviously I've only been here for a couple of days but the villages seem uh, it's like they're the villages that times forgot it's like they uh, are being slowly abandoned uh, there's not many there's no shops in the villages so if you want to find a bakery you're you know you're, you're lucky um, and any other small shops they're not there so they tend to congregate in the bigger towns and then you can find basically supermarkets so that there's, it's lost a little bit of an aspect. Even the smaller bars and restaurants are closing in the in the villages. So it's like they're dying, and it it's got kind of a sad, faded, abandoned feel to the villages. Now I could be totally wrong. I mean, obviously I'm just cycling through. It could be that behind closed doors everything is wonderful and nice. But this is a really agricultural area, and uh, there's obviously a lot of big farms. But I just wonder who lives in these small villages and what they do because they wouldn't. Maybe they're farm workers, or they were at some point. And maybe they're just older people now and the younger people have moved to the cities so perhaps if you're a viewer you live in france you're french maybe you could let me know i'm going through the lorraine region at the minute uh alsace was very similar and where to today uh north westward heading to a small village which again i have no idea what it's called right now but i'll find out when i get there although i did find a useful map here we go don't know if you can see that it would have been handy to have this when i was planning this region I think that will get me through most of today, although I have plotted where I'm going on my GPS. And that is about all I've got to say, because this is quite a lot long introduction video. And I will pack the rest of my stuff up and hit the road. Speak to you guys in a bit. into the day and 23 kilometers done and today it feels much different there's little to no wind well actually there might be a slight tailwind and uh, it's overcast which is a great thing i'm going to point the camera up so don't get vertigo so that's keeping the temperature down and it's actually making ideal cycling conditions right now so i have about what 50 kilometers left to do so it shouldn't take me too long maybe three hours and yeah it's a really good day so far so you guys Two hours seven in and 36 kilometers done and I think I spoke too soon about the no headwind. Yeah, guess what I ran into. <laughs> Never mind, doesn't matter. I'm sure I'll get there in the end. All adds to the challenge and all that. Just stop it. The park bench. Church is behind there. And I'm going to have
have a quick snack and then carry on. If you've ever travelled through France before, you'll know that there are war cemeteries everywhere from the First and the Second World Wars. And I think it's only when you visit it that you kind of realise you know, the scale of the wars, uh, the sacrifices that people made that were under orders that were not very well thought out for the most part. But I think more important than we are in the Western world to live in a world which is certainly a lot safer than my great-grandparents time because in fact these wars were a long time away now my great-grandparents are still alive uh, but they were too young to fight in the second world war so thinking back to the first world war is uh, is even further it's another generation away and I think it's it's become easy for us to forget how uh, quickly parts of the world can descend into chaos. You only need to look at Syria. Syria is a country that I cycled through eight, nine years ago, and it was one of the best countries I've ever visited. Eight, nine years later, absolute chaos, the place is destroyed. So does this mean anything? Am I, trying, am I, am I making a point? I don't know, probably not. I think we're just fortunate to live in the world we live in, and that's about all we can say really, isn't it? Might as well enjoy it while we can. And I think if any good came out of the European Union, one of the things was to prevent these wars from happening again in Europe. And on the whole, I think that's been successful. Has it gone past? Has the European Union gone past its uh, original purpose? Probably. But are we seeing two million dead every generation through war in Europe? No, we're not. Anyway, enough of that, I'm going to go and cycle soon.
end of another day's ride and I've ended up in a camping ground in a place called Grand Pré. Do you like my French accent there? It didn't suck at all, did it? Let me just swing around so you can see the campground around me. And why is it that when people learn French or Greek or any foreign language, they have to learn the accent? And why is it that when foreign people learn to speak English, no one bothers with an English accent, do they? They just speak it in their foreign accent. It's not fair, is it? Yeah, that's my thought of the day, that one. Anyway, so it was a short day cycle, around 74 kilometers, something like that. Pretty easy going. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to stay here for one night and then move on again tomorrow. And that's all I've got to say for now. Take it easy, guys. If you liked it, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, visit the blog. Maybe even look at me on Instagram. I might post something on there today. And I will catch you guys later. Cheers for now.